Uh, go ahead, Brenda. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda Bailey Hughes. I teach at the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University and am fairly new to IDG, have never, uh, except for a MOBTS demonstration that I think I met some of you at. <laughs> that, that's my first entree into this. But uh, my interest in IDG was that I use the apples to apples game in a lot of different settings and desperately needed an online version of it. So how many of you have played apples to apples? Has anyone played it? How about cards against humanity? Yep. Okay, <laughs> a few, okay, one, one has played cards against, cards against humanity is just the naughty version of apples to apples, but so, so we know where Priya is there. Um, the uh, apples to apples game is, so the first version of it that I used, I used the game itself before I started adapting and I used it to teach influential communication. And so basically what the game is, is a set of red cards and a set of green cards. And um, you're, you're, you're trying to win red cards essentially. And the red cards have just, a, let's say a noun on it. It might say New York City or maybe the red card says um, bathroom floors, whatever. Then all of the players, and I usually play in groups of four to six, they, each player is dealt green cards, five green cards that have adjectives on, adjectives on them. So maybe I have in my hand a deck that says gross, slimy, beautiful, meaningful, vibrant. The judge rotates from round to round in our group, but let's say that Jean is our first judge and she turns over the green card that says bathroom, then Dolly, Sarah, Peter, and I have to choose from our five adjectives which one we could convince Jean is most representative of bathrooms. So Sarah plays slimy and Dolly plays vibrant and Peter plays gross and I play charismatic. And we each make this argument to Dean why our card should be the winner. And those arguments then allow the students to explore different um, communicative influential attempts that they can use. Dean then says, yes, I love Peters. He wins this card. Peter gets the point, the red card. We rotate. Next judge is up. They turn over a new red card. Maybe this one is New York City. We all draw one more green card, so we're always playing with five green cards. We choose our adjective. Okay, so I used it to teach influential communication. Loved it as an exercise. It worked beautifully, but wanted a way to transition it online. In the meantime, I had found myself using apples to apples concept conceptually, but with lots of different content. So I created my own decks of blue card, green cards and red cards, for example, when I teach um, a section on positive psychology or being positive in the workplace. And so the scenario cards for my undergraduate students would be things like, you just bombed your chemistry exam. How do you stay positive? Well, then there are these, we each have our deck and of, of five positive strategies Jean's got her five, maybe hers include um, writing a gratitude journal, playing worst, best, most likely scenario, um, you know, changing her physical surroundings. So I've taught 30 different being positive tactics and, and those are divvied up in our hands. And once again, we choose the tactic that we think we could convince Peter, if Peter's our judge this round, um, is, is the best strategy for him to use when he's failed his chem exam. And then we rotate, next situation up might be, um, your roommate has a lot more money than you do and is always going out and partying and you feel upset and distraught because you can't go party or buy new clothes or whatever. And so we each pull a strategy and we try to convince the new judge that that's the win. In that case, when I'd written the scenarios, then the round two of that was I had students write their own scenarios. So you don't have to play with a false idea, play with a real idea. What's a, what's a scenario in your actual life where you find it challenging to stay positive? Write about that in a concise and clear way, and then they play their own red card and, and hear others 
say, oh, here's a strategy that you should use for that. Here's the strategy you should use for that. So they're getting advice on something real to them. And then the last application, which is the one that I, I brought to Naraj, is the idea of a design thinking workshop that I'll be running for an executive education workshop online. And I've taught design thinking for years, but always face to face. And so I'm a little nervous about teaching something so tactile as design thinking online. So uh, the scenario cards will be design thinking challenges. So they're things like, um, well, I guess we're going to show them, but not let them play today. Right? Yeah, should I start sharing my screen? You want to and start show? sharing so they can see some of the red card options. And you'll see how Naraj and T and IDG have kind of created this into an online platform with the idea being that all of us would have access to this game conceptually, but then we could all put in our own content. So if you don't keep being positive or design thinking or influential communication, you could still use this concept of there's a scenario, there are people arguing for it, and in that way they're quickly getting exposed to the, the, the strategy cards. So you work for a food and beverage company, one of your best selling projects, Snacky Snoodle has fallen in sales. Um, there's really no clear shift in consumer behavior. Your job as with your design team is to figure out how to get it back on track. So that red card is what we're fighting for. That's the winner. And then all of us have what I've, I'm introducing the green cards are all of these different design thinking tools. Some of them are from the empathic human centric research stage when you go out and you truly try to walk in the shoes of your users. Some of these are more around the ideation stage of design thinking and some of these are more about the prototyping. But again, you would have five of these cards in your hand, which would have been dealt to you electronically we can show you okay, that. So I'll show, uh, we can start the game, for example. Okay. So let me do that, Ashley. Uh, and so right now, that's all they could do. They could then play the game. Uh, oh, hold on, let me make this a little bit smaller. And of course, I can't get to the next stage for some reason. <laughs> Well, and as of yesterday, we still didn't have it that you just get oh. dealt five cards or two oh, that, we chatted. Right. So actually what uh, was happening there was we were forcing them to stay at that stage till the professor is ready to start the game. So okay. once you click start game, they then have 10 minutes and they're brought into this group chat where they're in video. Uh, and this is why five tricks was really helpful to build because now it's the same video chat where multiple people will be in this video um, and they'll be uh, provided um, uh, all of these cards. Uh, so I can play a random card. For example, I play germs away and maybe I should actually at least join as two people or perhaps if any of you were part of this, I can actually have you join. Well, you know what, uh, uh, so here's the card that's been played germs away and then we're waiting for two other people to uh, put their or the rest of the team to put their solutions in. Well, okay, so uh, uh, not in real time, I mean. So right, I'm right. saying that's the stage. I've set the stage up if you want to describe kind of what happens next. So yeah, so then we would be playing our cards because we're in there in video chat, we get a chance to argue for our card. We can say, oh, for germs away, which if he clicks on the red card, it gives a, the scenario in more depth. So we know what germs away is. And I don't even remember. I think it was a uh, you work someplace that has lots of, maybe it's a library that has lots of kiosks. And because of our concerns about COVID, we're trying to get away from the kiosks. So how do we keep the germs away and still allow our, yeah. our patrons to, so that's the card we're playing for. You would have five design thinking tools in your hand, a chronological map, a pain point map, um, I'm just going to, sorry, just do something. I'm going to try a real time experiment and just say, why don't we okay. actually just try and let people uh, play. go play, Super. right? Because I think it's better with more people. And for me to set up multiple players and all of that will just take me as much time as just trying it out and let people play right now. Uh, You're literally the second people to see this then, folks, <laughs> because uh, the, the developer and Naraj and I played a hand on Tuesday. So, so this is 
early, early prototyping, which, hey, is good design thinking in and of itself. <laughs> oh, but then I need to find the exercise. So this is the exercise. Uh, and it's clearly work in progress, but it's a small group, so I'm comfortable doing it. So I can click on test simulation, uh, and then uh, I can click create the exercise. Um, and this is the process you follow to test anything that you want on our platform. And then you enter into the exercise. Typically, you would put this into one of your classes. I'm just going to put you all, give you all anonymous access to make it really simple. And you do that by allowing anonymous users and having a link to the exercise. And I'm going to put that link uh, now. This is the second link. So don't click on the first link. Click on this link. Um, and you, you will then be part of the exercise. So I'm going to say done here. Uh, I'm also going to, and we see that people are joining. So actually, you, you can join as your professor account as well. If you're logged in as a professor, then you'll have to do what I am just doing, which is click join as student. Uh, and then you will be in here in the ex, uh, uh, in uh, something like this. And at this point now, I can allow people to uh, go to the next stage. So I can enable the group formation stage. Uh, and actually, uh, sorry, I, maybe I should move myself into a different group. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change. Uh, maybe I shouldn't change custom group composition. Just let me, uh, sorry, I'll create a new group. And I will put myself and Jean in that, or I'll put one person, one other person in, the, in that group. Maybe I'll put Peter and Jean. Um, so group two. And I'll move Jean also to group two. OK, sorry, a lot of setup. Uh, but now, uh, if I see, here is my group. And uh, in this exercise, we've set it up to be four players, but it can be set up with any number of players. Uh, and now I can start round one. Uh, at this point in time, everyone gets to read these cards, but they cannot do anything else on the platform uh, right now. All they can do is read the cards. So if you join the exercise, you should be at a stage where you're reading these cards. And so actually, I think in the, in the next version, we probably won't let them see the red cards. They'll only get to see the green cards. The red cards are just the scenarios. The yeah. green cards are the tools. These are what I want you to learn. And so rather than just lecturing on all of these, this is a fast and experiential way to introduce them to these tactics. So I would probably give them five minutes to read through the green cards, ask questions if they have questions about any of these, or perhaps I've provided a pre-read that summarized some of these and, and had some visuals to show them what they look like. But right. you're getting familiar with the various design thinking tools. So are there any questions on any of these green cards right now? That might be a good experiment to try. <laughs> or is it too quick for you to even try to read through them? Too quick, probably. Yeah. It feels very quick to read them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can ask a question that is, I'm curious about. Expert interviews, my design team always wants me to do interviews. Like every single time we want to build anything, they're like, go interview like, you know, lots of people. And I always just feel like it's, you know, so much time invested. Like if I wanted to build an IDG feature, for example, and then I have to go interview like 20 professors and then build it, like by the time we build it, it's going to be like, you know, next year. And so usually I say, why why don't I just think through and give you a prototype? We'll run it exactly like we're doing right now and then see what happens and we'll iterate. So my question is like my design team is always taught uh, do interviews, but I kind of feel like, oh my God, how do I convince them not to? So is this a good principle or not? I hear your resistance. And I think the 20 might be the problem. If you do an expert interview and a novice interview, you have both ends of the spectrum of knowledge and from that, you can start thinking of who is the persona you're, you're, you're designing for. Are you designing for the novice? Are you designing for the expert? Um, are you designing for someone in between? What does that person know that the expert doesn't? What does that person or not know that the expert does? What do they know that the novice doesn't? I think two interviews would still, it'd be faster and it would still help your original design. The problem with designing or prototyping, even if you know you're, you're good with iteration and you're, you're happy to come back and iterate, is you've already um, established some parameters of what the user sees 
without any input from the from the user. So I'm siding with your design team, Naraj. I think you need to do your interviews first. I, I think maybe my counter to that would be I probably am already implicitly doing the interviews because I'm talking to so many professors at, all the time. And that can very well be, exactly. Right. Um, okay, any other questions or should we move to the next step? I just have a quick question. Uh, um, what, um, in, in terms of the various audiences that you might run this with, I'm just, I'm just curious what, um, where, you know, where you're having the most success or what your sense is of, of, of who this is really good for. Right. So, Peter, the apples to apples game I have used in, with so many different audiences. I've used it with a third year undergraduate students. I've used it with freshman undergrad, third year undergrads. I've used it with my MBA students. And I've used different ver 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 versions of apples to apples with lots of executive e education groups as well. So the full spectrum, face to face, online, I haven't used it with anyone yet. Oh. My, my first go around though, what I'm designing this for Peter is exec ed. So as you're thinking about feedback for me, you know, imagine yourself as a mid-level manager in a corporation. And uh, the first time we're going to experiment with it is actually coming up on the 29th, uh, where it's going to be run as a design thinking workshop. Uh, and I sent a promo code so that if any of you are interested in experiencing it, uh, you can join that as well with real uh, participants. Real um, participants, because all of you aren't real. Well, <laughs> real in the sense of like, you know, people who are <laughs> students. <I know. laughs> I'm just picking on you. <laughs> yep. Um, so then, uh, should we start the game? Sure. All right. So now we can start the design thinking game, and you will be put into your video chats. Uh, just go on mute because otherwise you're going to have terrible feedback. Um, so uh, I can see, you know, Priya is joined. If you can go on mute. Perfect. Um, and so uh, here you see that like, you know, the two of us are playing and uh, Sarah actually has to define a problem, but Sarah hasn't entered the exercise yet. So perhaps is, oh, go, you're on mute. Um, I look, oh, I need to, oh, I need to use the camera. Okay, allow. No. I thought I had entered it. Just click continue, there you go. Okay, now I see that you're there. Okay. Okay. So and now we have, I have to, to click. Now you have to mute yourself here. Oh, you're such good sports. Thank you so much for doing this. Great. Okay. Sorry, someone is still not on mute. Sorry, someone is still not on mute. Sorry, someone is still not on mute. Well, Sarah is, Priya is. Okay. Everyone in their IDG window should be on mute so that we can continue the conversation on Zoom. Uh, in reality, in your class, you would tell them to actually just go to the IDG platform and mute themselves on Zoom, uh, and then it would all work out well. Uh, but so here we are, and so Sarah has played the no smudge glasses, and so we can now choose what to do. And I'm going to say that we should prototype because I like prototyping. And do then- you see, you see the info about it? Uh, yeah, when I clicked on uh, the cards, uh, there was detail below. Or do you mean on the scenario card? The scenario, do you see what no smudge glasses is No, about? not yet. So we would basically, uh, we we're going to enhance that so that this, you click there and you'll see the detail, but also uh, it would be, Sarah, your turn to, oh uh, yeah, you need to see the detail to be able to explain the problem. I see so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see it. So do I tell you what it says? Yes. Okay, sure. You have a brilliant idea for a new product, eyeglasses that do not smudge. You've engineered lenses that work and are now figuring out how to best position and promote your genius idea. Okay, and then so then I would go and I would say, I think you need to prototype it because basically to test if it works or not, you need to prototype and see, like put it in the hands of users and see if like it actually worked and if they liked it and ask them if they liked it. And if they did, and if they had feedback, you improve it and iterate. And so prototyping is the best option. And then Priya would say expert interviews. If we still have Priya on this call, she might have left from here. Left from here. Uh, you need to unmute on Zoom. I guess I would say expert interviews since that's what's typically done. 
and we should talk to people at both ends of the spectrum first and find out if this is a useful product that people actually want to use. Great. And then uh, I guess Sarah, now, you know, you just for people that are watching, you chose expert interviews out of a, a set of five or do you still see all 20 plus? I think right now it's all 20 still. Okay, eventually you will only see five. So you could read through those more easily, Priya. You would only have five to deal with at a time that you could choose from. And Niraj would have five, but they would be a different five in his hand. So that the deck of green cards is even is distributed among the players five cards at a time. Great, and so then, uh, Sarah, you can choose a winner on your screen. Prototype. Yep. So I clicked, oh no, I clicked prototype, but just explain that to me. Oh, Both there's, sides. I think the design needs to be better. Somewhere below the screen, there should say select winner. Yeah, and then, you. yeah. Continue. Okay. Okay, there. Uh, and then, so you said, oh. now you need to pick one person. And so I was selected as the winner uh, and randomly we move on to the next person. Now it's Priya's turn to pick, uh, uh, define the problem. And so Priya, if you can click on one of those or maybe just click on play random card. We're going to enable two options. One is it'll just randomly play the next card uh, as a problem or you can choose the red problems. Oh, you're on mute, sorry, Priya, in Zoom. Maybe there's something with our interface that needs to be better for you to see how to define a card, uh, to define a problem. There should be some buttons here which says play random card, perhaps on the bottom of your screen. Okay, there we go. So once, and so obviously this is like early stage, we need to make this much, much more intuitive for people to do. Uh, but now I can play, uh, uh, you know, a card. And so perhaps let's just go through the motions without actually talking through it. I'll just pick one and then Sarah, if you could pick another one. And then we just- Yeah, I'll just say, I only see five, I only get five green cards. Oh, so maybe we fixed that already. Right. This yeah, is real time. Ahead of ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and so then uh, Priya, if you could just pick a winner and uh, you'll have to click some button uh, below somewhere that say select winner and then select a winner. And it might not be very, okay, there. Okay, and what I, the reason I'm going through this quickly is I just want to show the screen which people were having trouble with because that's the one we're going to improve. Um, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Uh, part of the reason for doing this discussion is to really get feedback on what should be improved as well. So here's the thing. So right now, it's not very obvious, but because it's my turn to define a problem, there's a play random red card button, which we probably will move over here or something like that. When I then play the card, I see what the uh, information about great start is and I can describe that saying here is the problem uh, and then people would uh, put in their solutions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, I don't know if the debrief table is ready here, but oh yeah, so we can get into that later. So uh, that's sort of like how the flow of this exercise works. Uh, Brenda, I don't know if you want to take like, you know. Sure. Yeah. So that, that would be round one where they're playing with the random cards, the cards that I, I have created. Our vision is that round two, they would be allowed to create their own actual design problem. So just like when I had students write out their own scenarios where it's hard to stay positive, you would write out as a participant an actual design challenge that you're facing. So you've got some thorny complex problem at work, you write a, a few sentences about it, enough that without any input from you, someone can understand the idea. And then that card gets shuffled in. It could be played in your own team, but it could also be played by other teams in the room. And so then the debrief, uh, I have some debrief questions that we would go through, but eventually what we're toying with is you will get either a PDF or the video recordings of people all around the room when your card came up. So it's an honest to goodness challenge that you're dealing with. And here are these people around the room discussing 
here's the tool I would use, here's why I would use this tool, this is how I think it could solve your problem. You've got all of that data for yourself to go back and review then after the class. Um, in the exec ed world, I, I don't know that I would do that with undergrads. I'd be curious about your thoughts on that. Um, so that's that's apples to apples in a nutshell. What are your thoughts? Where, where, where do we need the most work? What other applications are there for it that you can imagine? Naraj, I know one of the things I, that we're going to have to address are security protocols. If we're going to use it in exec ed, I have exec ed clients who aren't even allowed to download like the um, Zoom app. They have to use the, the online versions of Zoom app. So I don't know if IDG has ever run into security protocol problems, but that's just one thing I want us to think about. I think it should be okay because the infrastructure we use is um, uh, something called Jitsi, which is has end-to-end -end encryption. Um, so for video, I think we should be fine, but I think we'll discover it as we try different exec ed programs. Yeah. And for any one where you want to run it, it would make sense to test it out with them yeah. before. Yeah, uh, just we don't to make have sure. that on our calendar, but we should put it. So I think one of the interesting things from, well, again, I'm really interested in your feedback, but then also any content that you might be able to type into where there's a series of tactics or strategies that you want students to get familiar with and apply to scenarios. And, you know, what, what, what is our management content that kind of has that tactical nature to it? I think there's tons of applications um, at an undergrad like survey OB course. If you think about, you know, what conflict style is the best to, to, to use in the situation or what um, even what personality type of the big five personalities is, you know, going to excel in a particular situation. Um, and Susan made a comment here that when she works with undergrads, she has them work on their own ideas. And I think I might also think about skipping the pre-written scenarios and go and just right jump in. right to give us your real scenario that's a good idea um if they've already yeah that's a good idea i i yeah another yeah. another um potential um application would be that i had set up something very quickly on bob cialdini's influence strategies um, when I was with three days notice and, and with Naraj's help set up a negotiation class. And this is actually more active. So that one potential I was thinking was that um, the cards could actually have um, Chaudini's influence strategies. Um, and then that could be sort of an, another way of, uh, and then they could, that you could set up a scenario um, and then they could sort of argue, well, this would be a better one of those strategies than others. So that's just a potential application because I thought this was cool. Right, right. And I think it works best, the game itself works best if there's, so Cialdini's what, nine strategies? Well, you can sort of pick but, any, but you any can, num of them, yeah. Yeah, I think if you go, that's what I was going to say, I think it's important to go into sort of the micro behaviors within the big ones. Or when you mentioned the big five personality, again, then you'd only have five green cards, but pull out some of those nuanced micro behaviors within the big five, then I think you get a deck of 30 some cards, 20 to 30 cards, um, and you're forcing them to really think more carefully about what is it to be um, charismatic or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I love it. One quick so, thought I had, uh, sorry, Jean, one quick thought I had was perhaps it makes sense to do this as initially a fishbowl with like you and a TA or another TA so that students see what it means to talk about one of the cards and mm -hmm. how that flow works and then they go into the actual exercise. You know, I think we had talked about that and then we just forgot about it in the design. That, and then I would feel more comfortable with whoever suggested just skipping the scenario cards. Part of the reason to have the scenario cards was we felt like we needed almost a, a practice round, but if we did fishbowl and we demonstrated it, then we could, we could jump right past the pre-created ones and get right to your own maybe. I think it depends on your motivation. If your motivation is just straight up, you're teaching them those tactics that are on the green cards, 
then the, the fake scenarios are fine. If you really want them thinking about application, then their own scenarios is the place to go. Jean, sorry, you, you've been- Yeah, no, me. just another application because I'm prepping a multicultural teams class for executives next week. And I have them read my HBR article, which has about four or five uh, intervention strategies. And um, so if you go through the intervention strategies or you give them the article and then the green cards of the intervention strategies, they come up with their own multicultural teams uh, challenge and um, they could get you know, five groups of input, each, each group could come up with one challenge they wanted the other groups to address. Yes. And um, they, could, they could do that. I think this is really cool. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, I don't think I can do it by Tuesday morning. <laughs> um, but it's but another next option. Round, Jean, and next because round. they're gonna do five tricks, then they'll understand how to do five tricks from doing both of them together. So it's gonna make, thank you. It'll make a really nice unit. Oh, I'm so excited. Anybody else wants information, let me know. Thanks, Jean. Sarah, what were you gonna say? I think there's another variation, again, I'm thinking about my undergrads, where either it'd be a separate activity or a round one, where you actually have a student um, assigned one of the influence tactics, for example, and they have to speak it in the video and the others have to click on which tactic are they doing um, to get the students actually learning what the tactics are. Um, I found, so I don't know that much about design thinking and I found I wasn't absorbing um, what each design thinking approach was. Um, so I would definitely need the pre-reading, but for undergrads, okay. we actually got them like um, almost doing charades, but with sound um, and okay. having to play a game, you know, are you doing a good job um, doing, you know, one of the influence tactics so well that, that the others can guess what you're doing. Right. Priya in the chat, in, in my versions, there's not one right answer. Now in Sarah's, there is a, a, a better answer than others because the student would have in mind, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to uh, use this particular tactic. So there would be a right and a wrong there. With mine, it, it, yeah, I've never used it in a, it's more of a, how well did you argue for your tool or your tactic or your strategy? Um, with, and there is something to picking the right, you know, there are some of these design thinking tools that work better. So like that last one, that the, the, the group played where you've already got a working um, eyeglasses that don't smudge and you're ready to get funding. You're almost past, you know, Naraj played prototype because he loves prototype. But if you think, you know, that the scenario kind of pointed to you've already had a prototype, you've got a, a working model here. So I don't know that you need prototype, you need more information on how people with eyeglass, you know, like there's, there's might've been a better card since you're at the funding stage and not at the building stage or something. I don't know. So. Yeah, I guess so the right answer, like it, it's sort of too luck dependent if you just got five cards in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Other feedback for us or other applications you can imagine using this for in terms of your content? I'm so grateful to you for your ideas. One thing I was just thinking about was perhaps this could even be run asynchronously in the sense that you get presented a card, which is a challenge, and you play another card and record a video. So it instantly pops up and you have to record yourself for a minute. And then um, you get to see all the student videos about it. So for example, I defined a problem, which was how do I build a design thinking exercise on IDG? And then all of you, whenever you wanted, would go in and click a card and record a one minute video. And then I would get all of those solutions and I could rank them or something or people in the class could rank them. Right, so we could have the whole list of the however many cards I end up developing, let's say 30 cards. We pick one, we record our video and then you on your own time could go find those videos and, and the tools that were selected by the people who played, yeah. 
And then if you really, if you got permission from students to make this available, you could have these available that people could browse for from other classes, other schools, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. All right, who's up next, Arash? Thank you so much. Were there any uh, other questions or are we good on this one? Because the rest of the time is actually more just uh, things that I had. I wanted to talk about articles and I wanted to talk about the business competition and the negotiation competition, but uh, you know, this is more interesting than any of those. Is this something that um, you would be like any, like would any of you be interested in? I guess Jean wanted to use it next Tuesday. I think that's too early, but um, when is the next that you could uh, conceivably want be interested in using something like this? Perhaps Sarah, you were thinking of something or Patty, like, would it be next semester? I'm just trying to think in terms of our development cycle. For me, it would be next semester. Okay. Right, for me, it would be next spring. Great, okay. Um, Susan, a spring for undergrads. Okay, great. So I think um, we're still going through next steps of these, or we still need to finish the version. Right now, you cannot define your own problem. So we're going to fix that, um, make that available, test that, uh, run a round of testing uh, uh, on Negotiate Up um, on September 29th. Um, and then after that, I think we have a couple more uh, uh, iterations of testing. Um, and then I think it should hopefully by then be in pretty good shape uh, and we can start adding other types of scenarios to it. 